One of the things I like about being female is that I can switch about whenever I feel like it. I can wear a skirt today and jeans tomorrow and no one minds. Which man, barring those who wear kilts, can wear jeans one day and a skirt the next without opprobrious comment? I can walk along with my arm through zoomies or around her and kiss her and dance with her and no one cares to toss. Try that if you're a man with your best male friend. I can lash on the makeup or go around as unadorned as a filleted fish. I can wear psychedelic green or flaming crimson or whatever color I fancy. I can do all this and much, much more, which man cannot, because I'm a woman. The prototype, the first sex, the progenerator, the activator, the primary pattern. Which is why I suppose men have so often tried to restrict and enslave us, because they know the Bible and all such male testaments got it wrong. Adam did not come first. Lilith, the first woman, came first. She came and spawned Adam in her orgiastic joy. Though, as science has proved, we females do not need to have an orgasm simply to beget a child. Now we know for sure it isn't God who reigns, but Goddess. And we know as scientific fact, not as man-made myth, that women can do pretty well without men. Men exist because we, wishing it, allow them to exist. Scientifically speaking, we don't need them anymore. But nevertheless, it's true that men cannot be and cannot do without us. Without us, they are nixed, quite simply impossible. Until men liberate themselves from the oppression they've made for themselves, until they free themselves from their confining taboos, their tongue-tied emotion, their blinkered eyes, their gummed-up ears, and their narrow-mindedness, they'll remain impossible and fail themselves. There's no place for men like that anymore. But I've courage, boys. Not all men are lads. Not all men are dodo, dildo, machos. There is hope. For where there's a will, there's a way.